What's up, guys? Who's first? What do you got? Well, Dana, you just did a little Instagram Live there um, saying that there's a lot of questions flying around and maybe people should tune into the press conference to have those questions answered. Is Charles Oliveira out of his fight with Islam and is Alex Volkanovsky in? Yes, all of that is true. Um, he, uh, round five of sparring last night before, uh, you know, he's supposed to jump on a plane today, splits his, his eyebrow wide open and uh, had it stitched up last night. Obviously, can't, uh, can't fly out there with that, you know what I mean? It, it would be one thing, too, if we, if we he didn't, they didn't call us, we would have had him go to a plastic surgeon that would have sewed it from the inside out, you know, get that thing done the right way. These guys never call us like they should when something happens. They call us after they get it stitched up. But on the flip side, too, I could see him not wanting to, not wanting to risk it Getting a, getting a shot like this, and then, you know, that, the Volkanovsky crew, I mean, him and Israel, these guys are just absolute studs, man. He jumps in, and, and he accepts the fight. So he basically took that fight with one phone call, it seems like. If, if Charles got cut last night, you call Alex, he says, yes, right away, two weeks' notice, I'm in. One phone call, and I would have announced it hours ago, except I was waiting for the guys to wake up in Abu Dhabi to let them know before we reported it, but these guys that surround these guys down in Brazil just can't keep their fucking mouths shut. You know, this came out of Oliveira's camp apparently and just fucking part of the business, you know what I mean? I would have liked to have talked to the powers that be in Abu Dhabi before it got announced, but people can't keep their fucking mouths shut for whatever reason. They want to act like they're in the know and, and make these phone calls, so here we are. That said, I mean, Charles Islam wasn't a, ma a, a massive fight, but Alex versus Islam, too, is probably one of the biggest fights you could get on that card, especially, you know, they did it in Australia. Now it's in Abu Dhabi. I mean, what a rematch and what a time to do it. This is how we do it, brother. You know, one fight falls out and we, we end up making a fight that, you know, it's one of the most anticipated rematches ever in that weight class. So, fun. This sport, huh? Mm-hmm. Um, I'll get on to one other story about that then straight up back to the contender story, uh, series. Paulo Costa went public and said he had surgery three weeks ago. Is there any danger that that fight could be off? Uh, yeah, it's possible. When do you think we'll get a verdict on if he's going to be able to fight or not? Very soon. Okay. Very soon. Is there another Unless another fucking big mouth pops up out of somewhere and you know what I mean? So, yeah. Hopefully within a couple hours I'll have an answer for you. Okay. Uh, contender series then. An amazing series again. Um, to fight the fights tonight, you had started off with two crazy knee KOs right off the bat. When you're sitting there and you're watching finish, finish, crazy fight, crazy fight, do you just keep sitting there going, man, if we could get this all year round, that would be way better? Uh, I mean, I, I, listen, I'll let you guys speak for yourselves, but I would love to do this every Tuesday. One of the, me, me and the guys were talking today. We're so bummed out that it ends tonight. We lead up to a fight week, right? We got a fight on Tuesday, then we got a fight on Saturday, then we got another fight on Tuesday, and we got another fight on Saturday. I love it. I could do this every Tuesday forever. So starting off with Davin Biddy Cool, I mean, when you get a finish like that, you're going to get a contract, you know? You 100%. Can't... It's just like, uh, just, uh, how about the kid's got 18 fights and he's 23 years old? I mean, we're talking about Roka, I'm assuming, right? Yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. One, one, of the, one of the best finishes. Uh, incredible. But not just that, to survive being slammed again and again in the first round, come out as if that never happened, and then just time the takedowns perfect, 100%. right? 100%. Love it. I lo oh, oh and not to mention the fact that let's not talk about, you know, Bittencourt was a, was a tough guy. He looked great, too. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, he's a guy that's 29 years old, but looked damn good. And uh, Medeiros, yeah. that kid... That kid is slick, man. I liked everything about that guy. The composure, the this, that. I mean, look at everything that he did. Um, takedown defense against the guy who's... See, did you see that guy's back? I mean, the guy looks like he's been wrestling since he was two. He probably has been wrestling since he was two. Um, you know, durable, tough guy with a great record. And, uh, yeah, what, what, what a finish by him, too. It's funny, you, sometimes you share the notes you take for that fight. I took the note, another fucking knee KO, I can't believe it. Um, but when you see a guy as him, he's well-rounded at 26, this is a guy you can look at and think, oh, he's, he's not one of the 30-year-olds we sign and we see how they do, that this is a talent and a prospect. A hundred percent. And when you look at him, you look at the way he fought, um, he's eight and one now 
And like you said, he's 26 years old. He's just about to get into his prime. It is like the perfect time for him to get into the UFC. It's going to be fun to see what this kid can do. Yeah. Now, moving on, I'll let someone else ask some questions after this. With Tarek Finney, you know, you mentioned about his age, and I understand what you mean. There are holes in his game, and he's just such a physical specimen that you sort of think, well, maybe we could throw him in there and he'll learn on the job. But you felt that, no, it's not the time. Here's one of the things that I, that I saw in him. He, he didn't like to get punched in the face. You know what I mean? That guy's got to get in there and start mixing it up a little more, work on his stand-up. Um, and listen, I'm in a great mood. <laughs> All these things, I, what could be better for me right now than anything? You know, I'm, I, you know it, I, I could have signed a guy and brought him in. I truly believe I would be hurting him if I brought him in. You bring him in and he gets matched up right in the UFC, it's not the time for him. He's a young dude. He's only 24 years old. He's a freak athlete. He's got some work to do. He's not ready. Last one for me, a record amount of contracts this season. What do you base that on? Do you think that's you getting more generous in your older age, or do you think that's just the talent in MMA is growing every year? What do you guys think? You were here every Tuesday. It's the talent. Um, you know, there's some guys that, that are questionable, right? There's some guys that I brought in that are questionable. Connor Matthews is questionable. He looks like he's got some ankle problems. You know, his ankles were rolling and, and everything. But how could I deny that kid? If you look at the fight that he fought in uh, looking for a fight, I said, I'll tell you what, you're 31 years old. Time is not on your side. I don't like signing 31-year-old contenders. Then he shows up tonight. He's almost a two-to-one dog. Fights an absolute war against the guy that's 10-0 and 0 and absolutely brought the fight to him did what he did tonight, I can't deny the kid. He deserves a shot in the UFC. So, you know, that, that, that kid earned, whether it's one fight or he pulls off some fun fights, who knows, he earned his, he earned his shot. Um, and this kid, Lima, I think this kid, Lima, can be a world champion. Yeah, what did you see in him that makes you think that? Because like you said, right, the other guy didn't really want to engage so much, but what did you see? That so if you think that about this, this, this other kid, 14 and one, right? This kid's got over double the amount of fights. That, that Lima had. And um, you could tell that this kid, once he started to mix it up with Lima, he didn't, like, he didn't like it. So he got on his bicycle and started running around. The ref should have stopped that from happening. Um, and, and even in the, in the third round, his corner told him, stop running around, get in there and mix it up. And he went in there and tried to go to war with him, and he didn't like it again. And he got back on his bicycle and started running around a little bit. But... Uh, I think Lima, you know, he's a young kid. He's only 24 years old. He's 6-0. and But I, I, he has, you know, he has what it takes to do something. So we'll see. Congrats on a great season. What's that? Congrats on another great season. I enjoyed it every Tuesday. It's awesome. Thank you. Hey, Dana. Thank you. Dana? Yep. Um, I want to pick your brain a little bit more on, on, on that Torres Finney decision. Um, I guess, like, with him and then, like, someone like Jose Medina last week, like, I guess – what did you see in Jose that you did not see in Torres Finney? Yeah. Um, I, saw, I saw some dog and some heart in that kid. Then it ends up we find out after that he actually never even had an MMA coach. Um, I don't know. It's, it's like a gut thing. I, I, I want to see that kid go properly train um, and watch him come back and, and see what he's capable of doing. I was just, I'm just interested. In I think that Finney is a guy who is a, obviously a freak athlete, guy's a fucking, literally built and looks like a wrecking ball. And uh, he just needs more time. He's young and inexperienced. Um, and, and I think I would be hurting him to bring him in the UFC. Um, with Roman, you said you already booked the rematch. He kind of hinted it's, it's going to be in Toronto in January. Is that just like kind of a, it's, it's going to be a kind of a special fight because it was a weird stoppage on this season, and, yep. and, and, and there's going to be some feelings and emotions running in that rematch. Incredible redemption, um, and the dude that he fought tonight is a, is a legit badass, and he wins impressively, and, you know, he gets his shot in the UFC now. Great story. Um, I wanted to ask, is there one fighter this season that you, Hunter, the matchmakers, like, kind of have your eye on, like, like this guy can be special from all 10 weeks? I mean, there's so many guys. I, I think there's so many from this season. To, to specifically pick one, I mean, I got two off this card. So, I mean, to, 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 to specifically say, oh, this guy, there's, there's so many. That's what makes the show so great. 
Gotcha. And then a couple couple last ones for me. Um, do you guys? I mean, you kind of alluded that you know the the cost of fight is up in the air. Do you guys like have a couple backups? Like, is, is there someone ready, ready to go in case Costa can't go? We're talking to a couple people right now. Um, with Volkanovski stepping up and take the fight, was uh, Gamrot ever an option? Yes. Um, <laughs> and then. Uh, I just wanted to know with what's going on with Israel and Palestine, is there any worry about travel, like travel worries to, to Abu Dhabi? No. No. Thank you. Okay. Over here. Yep. Obviously just broke the news with Volkanovski and Islam, but Ilya Tapuria made an appearance on a Spanish show earlier this week where he got asked about his next fight. He said him versus Volk was almost a done deal for January in Canada. Can you confirm that that was the original plan? Him versus what? Volkanovski was the original plan for Canada. Uh... Yeah, we were talking about that. And uh, what do you do now with that Canadian card? I don't know. I just came from the matchmaking room. We just got this done, and we just put on fights. I don't know. We'll have to see. And, uh, speaking we of the matchmaking room, the UFC posted a video of you and uh, Joe, the guy who won the matchmaker sweepstakes. You mentioned that you were going to make some fights with Joe at the matchmaking meeting. Since you broke some news today, could you care to share some of the fights you guys made? You want to know how fucking good Joe is? How good is he? I just hired Joe. <laughs> Joe works for us now. Is he yeah. going to be one of the matchmakers? This fucking kid is awesome. Yeah. I literally just back there. I did all the contracts, and I came back in. I said, I got one more. You want to work for the UFC? He freaked out. He is a fucking UFC lunatic. He went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the boys today. He knew every, you bring up a guy on the roster that he don't know. He knows everybody on the roster. And uh, he actually, so, so he did make a fight today. So... Um, apparently he was down in the, Lene came in my office this morning raving about the kid, oh, this kid's awesome, we love him, and this and that, and uh, he met a bunch of fighters uh, in, in the PI today, and one of them was Cody Garbrandt, and, and they were talking, and I guess Garbrandt said, listen, if you're the matchmaker for a day, I, I want to fight in December, so he came in and started pitching us on fights for Cody Garbrandt in December, and he made a fight. Could you kind of reveal what fight? Nah, you're in? we'll let it we'll, when we're ready. But I don't want to say it before the fucking kids even know that they're fighting. You know what I mean? But because <laughs> um, they don't know yet. But uh, yeah. So Cody, good work. You, you you got it done. He's fighting in December. Awesome, and uh, we're not. And you know what Joe's wife does for a living? They live in Detroit, Michigan. Guess what Joe's wife does for a living? She's a blackjack dealer. <laughs> <laughs> Right? It's like this was meant to be. Think she's going to find a job out here in Vegas? I think she will. That's awesome. It is meant to be. But um, we're not too far away from seeing GSP return to action in the Fight Pass Invitational. Is there any uh, update on who he's going to face on his return? To, who? Uh, GSP. No, I don't. I have no idea. Okay, and uh, last one for me. I know you were high on Joaquin Buckley's performance last week. Um, he went here after his fight, and he asked to be a main event for one of the Apex fight nights. Is that something you're willing to do? Again, I don't know. We'll, we'll, have, to, we'll have to get in the room and talk about that. Um, yeah. Sure. Congratulations. On Thanks, team. buddy. Appreciate it. Do we know what Joe's going to help out? What division of fighters? We're working on it. I'm actually going to hand him over to Hunter and let Hunter figure out where he's going to where he's going to go. Awesome. And then you got to go see the Sphere the other day to see the U2. Guys, what are your thoughts now about guys, the, the 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 venue and can you guys really use that for an event? I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. So I've been uh, I've been talking to MSG every day since it, the, the experience was amazing. Have you guys gone yet? Has any of you, have any of you gone? It's special. It's, it's, it's incredible. So, um, yes, I have been torturing them since I left on Saturday. I literally had my secretary call and make a, uh, a Zoom meeting with them again today. And uh, I want to, you know, these boxing guys are calling them up going, oh, we want to do a fight over those fucking guys. They're not going to spend the money to put a fucking show on in there. Those guys can't even do fucking replays, for Christ's sakes. They think they're going to they're gonna fucking put on an event at the Sphere. The Sphere is a whole nother level. And, and, and basically, in my opinion, I don't run the Sphere, and it's not my company. But it's so good that for the first, at least year, they should do nothing but incredible experiences. You know, bring in groups that will put on amazing experiences that will just blow people's minds because that's how not only is the visual and the seating and everything incredible in that place the audio 
is off the charts. I mean, these guys really nailed it. The hospitality, everything that these guys are doing over there is first class and it's, and it's incredible. I'm just going to tell you right now, I will put on the greatest live combat sports event anybody has ever seen at the Sphere in September for Mexican Independence Day. I fucking guarantee it. So I'm so in on this, it's not even funny. I know there's no shortage of the screen space there, but as for like a lighting rig, what you guys typically have done with the, the lighting rig, would you guys have to, would this be a completely crazy new redesign for what you'd have to do? So if the sphere is smart, they don't let anybody go in there until we go in there to do a live event. The first live transmission from there should be us. And that's why I'm saying September, obviously because I want it for Independence Day, right? But it'll take that long for us to really work this thing out and figure it out. Plus, the other thing is, you know I will spend the money to make it right. Boxing's going to fuck around with them on the tickets and fucking, you know. They, they, they don't have the money to do it. None of, those, none of those bums got the money to do it. I'll do it. Dana, there's talk of two promoters in boxing joining forces to potentially take an event to the sphere. Do you think they could bring the first event there rather than you guys in September? Who, boxing? Yeah. Yeah, they can join all the forces they want to join. Those guys, all they'll do is fight with each other and who's going to spend the money, who's going to be reimbursed, who gets their money out first. It was, it's It'll turn into a big fight and eventually turn into a lawsuit and it will be an absolute fucking nightmare for the sphere. It was talk of like Golden Boy promotions in top rank. Uh, doing yeah, good luck to them. Let them what are they going to do? Uh, Oscar going to put up the money? Ryan Garcia. Bob going to put up the money? Who's going to put up the money? Both of them. Both of them? Can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see it. What do you think? You think, <laughs> you think, you think they're both going to put up the money? I, 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 I think the UFC show would be great. But I'd like Imagine to cover both sports. I'd like to see both boxing and MMA do something there. Me too. You think they're going to do it? You think they're going to pay to program the sphere and put on an in-house show? You're shaking your head yes. Does that mean yes, no, you think they'll how, do it? How much, do you, how much would it cost? Shit loads of money. Hundreds of thousands to a million dollars, you know, maybe more. How, how, do, how do you get the money back? Is that just from you don't. ticket sales? You go in there and because you want to put on the baddest motherfucking live sporting event anybody's ever seen. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. Nobody will do it better than we will. That's a fact. I don't care what they say. And listen, if boxing can go in there and they can put on the, the, the event and they can do it, more power to them. You know, you know what happens when a boxing event happens. It's a going out of business sale. Let's grab as much money as we possibly can, make one big fight with a shitty undercard. Let's not spend any money on production. Good luck seeing a fucking replay. <laughs> Come on, you guys. You know better. Is you guys just like to push my buttons, get me to say a bunch of shit so you, you can chop it up and put it on social media. You know the truth. You know what's up. You know they're not going to do it. Let's unite. Bob's 92. Oscar's a fucking lunatic. Come on. Come on. Dana, speaking of the production uh, today, your broadcast put out a little graphic talking about the season, season seven contract winners. Uh, on that list for countries, there was 13 different countries represented. When you take a look at your brand and how it's grown and you talk about it being global, especially looking out, getting talent for the contender series, what are your thoughts when you hear that? Well, when you think about how focused I am right now in South America, and when I say South America, from Mexico all the way down to Brazil, right? and the countries that we've hit in South America this season on the Contender Series. Then you think about the global footprint and the brand that we've built and what we're doing and how many guys from, you know, all around the world that, would, that we've got this season. This show is incredible. It's one of the greatest, uh, uh, you know, avenues for talent to get right to the UFC and to showcase them um, with live fights. The best against the best. The matchmaking is off the charts on this show. And, you know, I always talk about how good the production is, you know, for, for, a, for a fight show that, that, that is uh, based around up and coming talent that none of you have ever heard from or heard about. Look, look, at, look at the production on this show. It's awesome. It's a big deal to me. If you can't, if you didn't notice. Of course. And obviously, you're very much focused on trying to find the best talent. But is there anything within you that when you take a look at that list that, okay, there's a new country or a new region that you want to explore more and try to bring more talent from? 
Yeah, um, I mean, if you look at what I'm saying about South America, what we're doing in South America right now, and obviously we're in a rebuilding phase right now in Brazil. And uh, you, you look at, what was there, 22 Brazilians this season or something like that? Yeah, 20. Yeah, so, um, and there was some, some badass kids on this season from Brazil. So, yeah, we're in a whole rebuilding phase there. You know, if you look at what, Brazil is always going to be a great market where we find incredible talent. Um, most of the, the big Brazilian stars have aged out, gotten older, retired, and whatever, and we're in a huge rebuilding phase down in Brazil right now. And last one for me, obviously you talk about and you think big all the time. For you, as you take a look at this Contender Series, you've obviously voiced how much you would like to get it to be a year-round thing for every Tuesday. How do you envision that to come to be? Well, we're coming out of COVID, and, and, and the talent pool is much bigger and better than I thought it would be coming out of COVID. So as long as no crazy shit happens in this nutty fucking world we live in right now, um, give us give – us, three or four years, let, let the talent pool build up again. And, you know, a lot of these, uh, these smaller shows putting on more and more events and, you know, more money coming into the sport, more guys making money, and it's all good. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. <clears throat> uh, Lima, Andrea Lima, he, uh, he did start fighting as a professional fighter just last October, and you just said, that maybe you can see him as a future champion. Andre Lima? Uh, yes, Lima. He started fighting last October? As a professional. Jesus fan. Christ. Well. And he's a 24 years old. What did you see his game so uh, special? I mean, the fact that you just told me that makes me even think higher of him. I, 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 you know, the guy's 6-0. and oh, I figured he'd been fighting longer than that. No, this, this, this kid is, is very, very good. The fact that he's been fighting since last October, how about the composure against a guy with more than double the fights that he has? And how he's chasing him around, he's going like this, and the kid's got a really good fight IQ too. Great fight IQ and the way he handled himself in there tonight. Um, you know, he made a guy who, who, who had twice the experience as him really not want to fight. And, look and how about the fact that he's been fighting since last October and he was a three-to-one favorite? What's that tell you? I didn't even notice that till right now. I just looked down on my paper. So I'm probably not wrong about this one. And Lucas Rocha, the other Brazilian, uh, he didn't make weight last week. And how close were you to, because you said he needed to impress, to be impressive tonight. How close were you to maybe not sign him because of the scale issues? Yeah, obviously you're off to a bad start. <laughs> you know, when you show up to the contender series and you don't make weight. But uh, after watching him tonight, I'm glad we gave him a second chance. Listen, when you look at these kids and you see how talented they are and what they can do, there's so many other things that factor into whether they're going to become a star or a champion or top 10, top 5, making weight, personal problems outside the, you know, outside the sport, uh, and many, many other things that play a factor in whether somebody's going to make it or not. Fame, dealing with fame is, is a very weird thing for a lot of people. Uh, UFC just hired 20 Brazilians this season in Contender Series. Is it fair to say it is the best Brazilian season ever on Contender Series? Yeah. Like I was just saying to him, we're, we're, in, a, we're in a building phase right now in Brazil. Um, and again, back to the matchmaking. Matchmakers did an incredible job this season uh, with all the talent, not just Brazil, but obviously killed it in Brazil. Yeah, the reason for my question is because five years ago, you guys, you made uh, Contender Series Brazil here in Vegas, just with Brazilian fighters. Yep. Is there something that maybe we can see again in the future? We could see, we could see Contender Series Europe. We could see Contender Series England. We could see Contender Series Australia. The list goes on and on as long as there's enough talent. You know what I mean? You have to have an overload of really good talent just to match make some of these fights. Yeah, so, so far it's not part of the plan in the near future. Sure. I don't know about the near future, but obviously it's a possibility, but there, the talent has to be there. Perfect. Last one for me. Uh, featherweight female division, 135 pounds. Uh, do you have any, do you have, is there something official already who is fighting for the belt and when? What's the question? 
Yeah, yeah. We, we talked about that in matchmaking today. We're working on it. No, we're, we don't have an announcement. We're not close. Uh, one, Daniel, um, Ilya Teporia had, had come out and said that he was going to fight Volkanovski. He asked me that. Oh. Yeah. I guess I wasn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's rude. <laughs> and now you don't know the answer. Good night.